Okay guys, I'm back. Where have I been? Well, I've been recovering from past injuries. Years and years ago I used to only ride litre bikes and I had a couple of accidents and the, they sort of reared their ugly head again. I couldn't ride. My right arm, I had damaged some nerves and I couldn't couldn't do this. I just couldn't couldn't do the throttle and eventually when it started to heal I could throttle but I couldn't move my fingers like this to the brake. I, I had to literally take my hand off like this and then brake and it was just kind of dangerous. Now, can you hear that noise by the way? That is the sound of Japanese summer. Cicadas I think they are. Anyway, last day before the summer holidays so let's go to work. Not very fun, but oh well. Anyhow, let's get on with it. So yeah, injuries. Years and years ago I had a, when I first came to Japan actually, it was about 10 years ago, I bought a uh, FZR1000 X up from a race mechanic. So the guy had um, done a whole bunch of tuning using like, I guess stuff that he might have, might have borrowed from his uh, race team. But yeah, he did like a eight hour endurance racing. And so he, he had this FZR1000 that was, I can't remember what year it was, but it was like the uh, the one before the Thunder Ace. And uh, he'd like put, put different carbs on it, tricked up the suspension. Like from the outside you couldn't tell, but he'd obviously revalved it and it was adjustable. Uh, like full exhaust system, loads of trick bits on it and like it was lightweight. And anyway, I crashed that thing pretty badly and I was in hospital for six weeks and then I couldn't walk again because I broke my uh, lower leg like the bone actually came out of the skin I was I didn't realize how bad it was until uh, I looked down and saw my bone was sticking out my leg and then I basically passed out <laughs> I passed out but before that I screamed like in Japanese help help so I basically I woke up in uh, woke up in the ambulance and man it hurt so bad and uh, so obviously they they fixed me up but they told me like I'm gonna have to have rehabilitation for a long time and I wouldn't be able to walk for six months and uh, at that time purely bad luck my wife had actually gone to England uh, gone to stay with my mum for some reason can't remember why but the day I got discharged uh, my wife wasn't back from England yet so her flight got delayed so I didn't have a phone either because the phone was in my pocket when um, when I crashed so my phone was broken and I'd only been in Japan for like a year and a half maybe and I really didn't remember anyone's numbers like pretty bad to say but I didn't know what my wife's telephone number was so for the first two weeks I was in hospital and nobody knew where I was <laughs> so eventually uh, I guess my wife just thought that's strange I've not heard from him for weeks you know like that was when we were still freshly married so she, she was probably well actually I did like I was calling her every day to say hello darling how are you you know but then she didn't get calls and so she started panicking and phoning hospitals and stuff then uh, one of my friends did the same so then my friend came to visit me in the hospital and being an asshole that he is he bought me all the sorts of things that you can't have in hospital so he bought me two packets of cigarettes, six cans of beer, a porno mag, and like a male sex toy. 
<laughs> and because I couldn't walk or I wasn't in a wheelchair or anything, all this bloody like contraband kind of stuff was right next to my bloody bed. And every day, like the nurses would come in and they'd see my freaking porno mag and my cans of beer and cigarettes and a goddamn sex toy. It was like the most embarrassing thing ever. <laughs> typical bloody friend he was actually a barman so I guess he did it on purpose thinking it'd be funny but anyway I got out of hospital and then obviously no one was there to pick me up and that guy the same guy that bought me all the freaking porn and stuff had agreed to come and pick me up so I waited outside for like an hour on crutches and then he didn't come so I thought frick it I've got like my wife's not in the country my friend's not coming I'll just go for a drink typical typical stupid move so considering the doctors had told me that I wouldn't be able to walk for six months I got on the subway by myself on crutches went downtown and went drinking and then because I was drunk I forgot that I had just got out of hospital that day and that I wasn't supposed to walk and stood up and walked to the toilet it was only when I got halfway to the toilet that I realised, oh, Jesus, I'm not supposed to be putting weight on this leg. Uh, luckily, nothing came of it, but yeah, it was. That's the sort of typical thing that I used to do when I was younger. But anyway, because of that injury and a broken arm injury from years and years before that, uh, well, it's never bothered me until now. But some, for some reason, it just started hurting like hell a few days, uh, a few we few weeks ago. It was like um, July, July the tenth, I think. So from July the tenth until this week, I haven't been able to ride my bike at all, which has been really, really bad. But uh, I'm on the bike again today, so thank God. But yeah, I rode like about a week ago I just rode to work and I couldn't couldn't ride properly I couldn't go full throttle and I couldn't brake at I couldn't keep my hand on the throttle and the brake at the same time like I had to roll off the throttle and lift my hand off and then brake so it was pretty dangerous I was just using the rear brake pretty much all the time so yeah I decided to just take the train to work for a little bit and uh, yeah basically I'm almost healed now I can f this hand's still a bit numb that this whole area the top of my hand feels numb and the vibrations from the bike are sort of maybe not particularly helping but uh, yeah getting better anyway should be fine within a few days or a week anyway so that's why I haven't been making any new videos guys so apologies for that uh, you um, you have to trust me on how freaking desperate I was to get on my bike again it was driving me mad not to be able to ride and actually today I've got work but I'm going to test ride a 790 Duke KTM 790 Duke today I, when I bought this MT-07 I was desperate to buy a, a 790 Duke when it was like brand new it was like last October I think when I got this and just the price had put me off like it was 4,000 bucks more than the MT-07 Japan prices obviously everything's more expensive here, but um, now the the dealer that I always used to use because before I had a 690 Duke and a SMC 690 So they called me and said hey, we've actually got two second-hand uh, models and uh, the price is like nine uh, well, I don't know what it is in dollars, but it's like nine hundred and eighty thousand yen. So it's like close to a million yen seems to be about average for a second-hand 790 so I really don't want to sell this bike I really love my MT-07 but I was so freaking obsessed with the 790 Duke because it was like the most logical step like I'd always I've had KTM's for the past like three years so to get a uh, 790 was obviously that's what you do all right last chance to do a wheelie Yeah, I can't wheelie now either. I just realized I can't do full throttle completely yet. All right, anyway. Guys, so let's get this 790 test video underway. For now, I shall buy myself a coffee, some cigarettes, and then off to work. 
see you guys later. Ciao, ciao.